Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to explore the relationship between the golden ratio and the Fibonacci numbers. So now in the first video in the series, we define the golden ratio by considering two line segments A and B, where line segment A is longer than line segment B. And we said that segments A and B uphold the golden ratio if the following equation holds. We have the ratio of A to B is equal to the ratio of A plus B to A. And what this means in actual words, we have the ratio of the longer segment to the shorter segment, modeled by A to B, is equal to the ratio of the entire segment to the longer segment, which is modeled by A plus B over A. And now, in the previous video, I solved for the golden ratio, and we found the golden ratio phi to be equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And now, if we were to work this out and express it as a real number, we have the golden ratio phi is equal to 1.618033989. And we'll stop at 989 because this number will continue on forever because it is an irrational number. But for this video, all we care about are the first few numbers after the decimal place. So now, what is the connection between the golden ratio and the Fibonacci numbers? Well, let's just recap. The Fibonacci numbers are a recursive sequence of numbers, which means that each subsequent term is defined by the two terms before it. So if we look at, let's say, 3, 3 could be generated by looking at the two terms before it, 1 and 2. We say 1 plus 2 equals 3. If we want to get to the next number, 5, we have 2 plus 3 equals 5, because 2 and 3 are the two numbers before 5. And we could get to any other number. Let's say we do 5 plus 8 is 13. 8 plus 13 equals 21, and now I stopped the list at 233, but if we wanted the next number in the list, we could say 144 plus 233 equals 377. So now, to find this connection between the golden ratio and the Fibonacci numbers, let's use this concept for comparing the longer segment to the shorter segment. So for this equation, I really want to just focus on this part here, comparing the longer segment to the shorter segment. So what we want to do is, we're going to set A and B equal to a pair of consecutive Fibonacci numbers. So now we set our line segment, and we'll say that this piece is the longer segment, and the second piece is the shorter segment. So now let's look at, let's say, 3 and 2. We're going to set the longer segment equal to 3, and the shorter segment equal to 2. And this is a consecutive pair of Fibonacci numbers. But now when we look at the ratio of the longer segment to the shorter segment, 3 over 2, this equals 1.5. So, so far nothing impressive, but 1.5 I guess is somewhat close to 1.618033989, but it doesn't really show us much of a connection yet. But now let's look at what happens, we'll, li we'll label this Roman numeral 1. But now for the second step, Roman numeral 2, let's consider another pair of Fibonacci numbers, but let's look a little bit further down the list. Let's say we go with 13 and 8. Well now when we draw our line segment, we're looking at the ratio of the longer segment to the shorter segment. Well the longer segment or the bigger number of this pair of numbers would be 13 and the shorter number or the smaller number would be 8. So the ratio we're setting up comparing the longer segment to the shorter segment would be 13 over 8. And now what happens when we simplify 13 over 8? We get 1.625. So notice how we went from 1.5 to 1.625. 1.625 is definitely closer to 1.618 than 1.5 is. So as we can see already, as we move further down the list and select consecutive pairs that are further down the list of the Fibonacci numbers, we're getting a ratio that's getting closer to the golden ratio. So now as we move down further and further, let's see what happens when we pick another pair of numbers that are even further down the list. Let's say we go with 144 and 89. Well now the ratio we want to look at is 144 over 89. But we're using this concept of comparing the longer segment to the shorter segment. So we're going to set the longer segment equal to 144 and we're going to set the shorter segment equal to 89. So now the ratio of the longer segment to the shorter segment is equal to, we have 1.6179, and this continues 77528. 
So as you can see already, notice how we went from 1.625 to 1.617. From 625, we were 0 0.007 away from 618. Notice how this is 618 thousandths if we hide the rest of the digits after the decimal place. And over here we have 625 thousandths after the decimal place. So we're 0 0.007 away from 0.618. But now we're 0 0.00 one away from 0.618. So you can see already we're starting to get much closer to this golden ratio. And now just for the last pair of numbers we want to look at, we'll pick the last pair of numbers in the list. We'll look at 144 and 233. So for part four of this illustration, we're going to set the lengths of our line segments equal to 233 and 144. So we have 233 and 144. But I bet you could guess already what's going to happen. When we look at this ratio, 233 over 144, we could work this out on our calculator and we get 1.618055556. So already we could see, now notice how we went from 1.6179 to 1.6180. So now we're accurate up to the ten thousandths place and you can bet if we picked another pair of Fibonacci numbers further down the list we would go from five 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 six and we would get closer to three three nine eight nine so the pattern or the connection between the Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio is as you look at the ratio of consecutive pairs of Fibonacci numbers the further you go down the list the closer that ratio gets to the golden ratio so, I believe this will illustrate that concept that we are getting closer to the golden ratio. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on the connection between the Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was enjoyable.